Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Kerbalism, which is being made by forum user Shotgun Ninja, and what this not-so-little piece of work looks to add into the game is a massive realism overhaul. Effectively, this particular mod takes all of the existing realism mods and chucks them all together into one singular thing that both amazes me and terrifies me in all the new ways I have now to potentially kill my poor innocent Kerbals. Everything from food and oxygen to quality of life, equipment malfunctions, and even radiation and more is all a part of this Kerbalism realism overhaul. And it's pretty awesome. So let's just jump right on into the VAB and uh, have a little chat, possibly a long chat, about how all it works. Now it's going to be a little bit different from how we normally go about our mod videos here as there aren't exactly a whole lot of parts to talk about individually as one of the good things about this mod is the mod maker has integrated as you can see here from all the fun new additional options we have they have integrated a lot of the new realism stuff into existing command pods and even habitation pods like the hitchhiker storage container down here. So we don't have to actually add in a lot of parts, but there are a few. So let's start out by talking about, I think the most basic and simple thing to uh, start with on this realism overhaul, and that's climate control. One of the things your Kerbals now have to worry about is the temperature. Your Kerbals like it at around 21.85 degrees centigrade. And any temperature difference outside of that, your command pods and hitchhiker storage containers and even their EVA suits will now have to use electrical charge to compensate for that. Now, unfortunately, I really don't have anything to show you for that parts-wise, but that is an important thing. So the hotter or colder the planet or the closer or further away you are from the sun, the more or less your command pod or habitation container will have to work to make it that right temperature using electricity. And as I said, it may have to work more or less. So the electrical charge usage will vary depending on what the outside temperature is. And uh, that could be quite a large swing, so that's something you definitely have to take close consideration of when planning your missions. Now the next thing we can look at here, and one that does involve parts, is food. Now we have here four different food storage containers, all of which are found in utility, and we have a large one here, a uh, not quite so large one, a slight smaller one and a really tiny one as you can see we have the large not so large small and really small in varying degrees of amounts of food and as you'll notice here all of them default to half filled now you also do have food built into all of your command pods as you can see half full and your hitchhiker story containers or other container modules again half full and kind of the reason for that is food weighs a lot. It's it's not exactly the lightest thing on earth to provide food for your Kerbals, but it is necessary for their survival. You have to have it to eat, and without food, your Kerbals will only survive for a couple of days, which means mission planning is going to be important. You're going to have to make sure you have enough food in these containers or in your command pods to last that mission, or you need a greenhouse, which we have down here. It's another part added in and we can open the shutters and this greenhouse will produce food so long as it has light to help things grow. Now if it doesn't have natural light, you can actually also use these lamps and you can turn up or down the lamps to different degrees of intensity to help increase or decrease the growth of the plants in the greenhouse. Now, natural light is how it's mostly gonna be done, and that works very similarly to, say, solar panels. The closer you are to the sun and better sun exposure you have, the more quickly this is going to grow. The farther away from the sun or the less exposure, the slower it is 
going to grow. And that's where these lamps come in. If you're far away from the sun, or say you're on the dark side of a planet, you can turn up these lamps to help it keep going. But the lamps, of course, use electricity. So now, remember, the climate control uses electricity. The greenhouse uses electricity when the lamps are on. So you're really going to have to worry a lot more about your electrical usage with this realism overhaul installed. So you're gonna have to plan with a lot of generators or a lot of solar panels, or keep a close eye on things for your Kerbal's survival. Now, other factors that affect the greenhouse, besides just the natural light and artificial light, is there is a soil bonus. If this greenhouse is actually on a planetary body, so even if it's on the moon or Duna or just here on Kerbin, it will get a soil bonus because you can grab just, you know, natural soil from the place you're on, which will help it grow faster. You also have a waste bonus. As your Kerbals are in the, you know, whole space station or colony, whatever you have, they're going to produce waste. The more waste you have, the more you can use it to fertilize the greenhouse, making things grow faster. There's also a fun feature. Now, all of these things affect how fast it will grow, but in the end, you're gonna get roughly the same amount of food. And when it's time to harvest, you will get a lovely button on the UI that just says to harvest the food. Thing is though, you may run into times when perhaps you didn't plan correctly and with your storage containers and you need food right away. There is also an emergency harvest button that you can press, which will mean you will get the harvest right then and there, but the harvest is early, so you're not gonna get nearly the same amount of food as if you were waiting. But it's definitely a uh, you know either or game. We either harvest now and get some food, or try and wait and have the potential of dying of starvation, which isn't exactly something you want to have happen to your Kerbals. And that's really all there is for food. So the next thing we have is oxygen. Again, every command pod or habitation module has oxygen and it's full all the way up, but we also have these lovely little oxygen tanks here, which also full all the way up, and they will of course provide you with oxygen required for breathing and a Kerbal cannot live for more than a few short minutes without oxygen. So always have it on board. They definitely need it. Now as for weight, it doesn't weigh nearly as much as food because it's it's air. It's you know weighs next to nothing. So it won't add a whole lot to your ship. But again, you're going to have to make sure you have enough for that long journey. Though, just like with the greenhouse for extending your food supply, there is also a system built in to all of your command pods and habitation modules for reclaiming oxygen. If we actually go up to, say, the cupola module here, you'll see that we have a scrubber. Every command pod is equipped with a scrubber, and this will take the CO2 out of your ship and turn it into oxygen. And it will use, again, electrical charge. So once more, you really have to watch your electricity in your ships now. And this will uh, turn it at a rate per hour of varying efficiencies. And this is where I actually really, really love this oxygen bit. The efficiency of the scrubber is determined by your technology level. So if you're playing in career mode, at the start of career mode, your scrubbers will work at an efficiency of 50%. So half of your air effectively will get recycled, which is good. Now, once you get the miniaturization technology, it goes up to 60%. Precision engineering technology, 70%. Science tech, 80%. And finally, the last technology upgrade that will increase the scrubber is experimental science, and that will make your scrubbers 90% efficient. So they will recycle 90% of your air and that is just freaking wonderful. Now, and that, that's actually a really, really good tech to have. Now, since we're in uh, just sandbox mode, we by default have everything. So we will be running at 90% here on this video. But if you're career mode, I really like that you have to actually build up that amount of efficiency through technology. It's quite cool. Now, the scrubbers, like I said, they will run off of CO2 that will just build up in your ship and then we'll turn it back into oxygen through electrical charge, which for this one, 36 electric charge 
per hour. So again, something definitely to keep an eye on. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is quality of life. That's something we really haven't seen much of in the mods so far, but it's something quite important. If you have a Kerbal who's sitting all alone in a Mark I command pod, he's going to get pretty lonely all by himself. Plus, it's kind of cramped quarters, so he's not going to be all too happy. But there is a lot of things that can change the quality of life for the better. For instance, living space. Like on this particular mission, we have a cupola module and then a uh, hitchhiker storage container. If we wanted, we could just have one person in the cupola module and one or two people in the hitchhiker storage container, and that would count as more living space because we don't have all of the seats in the hitchhiker container filled. So for every empty seat in your ship, it will count as more living space, which will make your Kerbals happier because they want to stretch their legs and, you know, go about the place without having to bump into people constantly. Now, of course, also an important thing for Kerbals is company. So if they're on their own, they're going to go a bit stir crazy. If they're going to be with other people, they'll be a bit better. But if it's multiple people in cramped quarters, so if they don't have much independent living space, they're gonna be at each other's throats, which is not a good thing. Another thing is crew rotation. Your crews like to have a break from time to time of from their other crew members. So if you have multiple hitchhiker storage containers, you would want to actually rotate your crew in and out of them so that they deal with different Kerbals on a day-to-day -day basis. This will make them happier and have a better mental state overall. Next is entertainment, which is a very interesting thing. Certain modules will produce entertainment. For instance, the cupola module will produce entertainment at a factor of two because it's a lovely place to view space from. The hitchhiker container also does have a happiness factor because it has all of those little, you know, storage containers full of games. Now, finally, from a part that is added in, we have this gravity ring, which adds into the game a much larger habitation space, so it really increases the habitation, so that they, it makes them very, very happy to be there. And it does have entertainment at a factor of three. So it's entertainment, it's extra habitation space. All in all, it will make your Kerbals a heck of a lot happier. But notice, the gravity ring uses 0.5 energy Per second. So again, you're going to get a lot of happiness and a lot of extra living space, but you're going to have to use electricity. And of course, it also has food, oxygen, and something we'll talk about here in a moment with shielding. Now, about the quality of life, if you don't allow your Kerbals to have a good quality of life, if either they're all alone by themselves or in cramped quarters, eventually they're going to snap and there's different types of breakdowns that will affect your crew in different ways. The first is mumbling. A Kerbal has been in space for too long. Now, you have no bad effect from it, but it's a sign that things are going poorly. Now, that's typically is if you just have one Kerbal all by himself. He'll start mumbling to himself. If you have multiple Kerbals together, they'll start arguing again no a bad effect will happen, but it's a warning sign of things to come. If you don't, you know, fix their quality of life issue, eventually things will start to happen. For instance, you'll have the fat finger event. Basically, someone will press the wrong button on a control panel and you'll actually lose science data. Another is a Kerbal will go into a rage and a random component on the ship will get broken, which we'll talk about malfunctions here in a little bit. Another one is the Kerbal will become depressed and he won't respect the rationing guidelines of your space program, and so you'll lose food. And the final one is someone on the ship will turn the wrong darn valve and you'll actually lose oxygen. So if you don't keep your Kerbals happy, bad things will happen. Very, very bad things will happen. Which, granted, I mean, you might not have to worry about that, because one thing I haven't actually mentioned, which I probably should have, with the, uh, <laughs> the climate control, food, and oxygen, if you fail on any of those, your Kerbals die. So the quality of life, you want to keep them happy, because it'll help them 
you know, maintain all of their food, all their oxygen, no broken down ships, because all of those things could lend to, say, them breaking a battery, and suddenly the climate control doesn't work, and they all die of being frozen to death. Or they run out of food because someone pressed the wrong button or didn't respect the guidelines and they'll, you know, run out of food. So all these things sort of compound on one another and you got to watch all of it. Now the next thing after uh, the quality of life is malfunctions. Like I said on that last one, someone could go into a rage and break something. And that's another thing in this mod is malfunctions. Parts on your ship will break. Now, none of them will completely break. Like you won't lose a food storage container entirely or an engine entirely or anything like that. What they will do is become less effective to where the point where you basically shouldn't have it. Like engines will overheat faster. Solar panels output will be reduced in half. Converters will be reduced by half. Drills reduced by half. Reaction wheels uh, will the torque will be reduced by half antennas will only work at half the range which is again something we're gonna have to talk about here in a little bit we have antenna range now but yes uh, your different parts will malfunction making them less useful and thus could compound issues to where your Kerbals die so you want to keep the ship in tip-top shape and how you can do that of course is through repairs you can send an engineer out of the station or out of your station or ship to repair the malfunctioning part they don't need any tools or anything special it just has to be an engineer once they fix the part they just go right back in and you're good to go now besides that you also have manufacturing quality and this is another one of those things that scales with technology at the start of the game pretty much all of your parts will be at a quality of one and they're bound to fail eventually once you have advanced construction they'll only fail at about a 50% rate specialized construction about a 25% malfunction rate composite technology 16% rate and once you get meta materials technology they only fail at about a 12% rate so it gets a lot better the better your technology which means that you know your uh, space programs doing pretty darn well now the next part which again I hinted at with the losing signal is signal now like with some other mods we've had in the past you actually need to have a signal link between probes so if you're sending out a probe core it has to have a radio signal link back to the Kerbal Space Center not only that but a part of Kerbal happiness is if the Kerbals can actually talk to people back home if they have an antenna your Kerbals will be happier because they can talk to their family and relatives, etc. So if you don't have an antenna on board, your Kerbals are going to be less happy and probes won't work. Now, if you don't have line of sight, because that's one of the things, the signal has to be line of sight with the Kerbal Space Center. If you don't have that, say for instance you're on the other side of a planet, uh, on the other side of a moon or something like that, you can use relays. We can toggle relay on any different communication dish that is in the game, including one that they add specially for it, this Communitron 8 right here. Any one of them can be added to a relay. Now once you activate the toggle relay, guess what? It uses electric charge because it's basically using part of its dish to always be active to transmit data. And with a relay turned on, you can have these on scattered all around the solar system and any probes will bounce their signals off of relays to then bounce it back to the Kerbal Space Center. So that way you don't have to have line of sight. Because again, line of sight is important because not only will the probe cores not work and not only will your Kerbals not be able to call home, but also there's a transmission cost for your science. If you do not have line of sight and you try to transmit you lose the science you have to have a signal and relay back to the Kerbal Space Center to get your science back home that is of course if you choose to you know actually transmit the science if you're bringing it back manually you're still good but to transmit it yeah, you, you gotta have the line of sight or through a relay system. So you're going to want to set up a whole series of relay satellites across the solar system, which will, again, have to use electricity to do it. And each different antenna 
has a different range. So basically the more powerful the antenna that you have, the bigger its range here. So like this one, oh uh, god, let's click that. It's 139.9. I don't know what those units are supposed to be, but GM. Whereas this one over here is one, oh no, that's 139.9 as well. What is this one here? So I know that they have different ranges on them, unless I was just reading things wrong. Yes, this one has 88.4. MM. So different types of relays or dishes will have different ranges. They'll have to have line of sight with either the Kerbal Space Center or another relay satellite for probes to work, science to be transmitted, and for your Kerbals to call home. All of which is, oh boy, a whole lot of things to do. Now again, your signal's range can get boosted by technology. Start of the game, there's no range boost. Advanced electronics makes the range boost 2.2 times. Large electronics, 4.4 times. And experimental electronics technology gives you a 6.6 .6 times boost in the signal range of your antenna. Now the final thing here is your signal's even though you've built a lovely relay satellite system and gone through all the trouble of having that whole thing set up, can get blacked out from space weather, specifically coronal mass injections, which we'll talk about momentarily. Before we do that though, we need to talk about radiation because it's involved in that weather. Now, one of the things is that another thing that will kill your Kerbals is radiation. Too much radiation will kill a Kerbal. That is why every one of your ships, your command pods, and your habitat containers now have a lovely new thing you can add to them called shielding. The more shielding you have, the better protected they are from radiation. Problem is though, shielding weighs a lot. For instance, if we look at our ship right now, we have a mass of 48.260 tons. Now, if we add all four shielding to the uh, hitchhiker container here, <laughs> oh boy, we went up to 56.26 tons. Look at that. So that is, oh my, that is, uh, that is very, that is very, very big. Eight ton difference. Eight tons for four shielding. And that is something, again, you're going to have to want to watch. If you know you're going to be experiencing a lot of radiation, like on a trip to Duna, you're going to get a lot of radiation. You're going to want some shielding. But you have to balance the amount of shielding to the weight and fuel consumption of your ship. And, you know, how much you want your Kerbals to live. <laughs> All good things. Now, another thing you have to take into account is magnetospheres. For instance, if you're in orbit around Kerbin, the magnetosphere actually protects you from radiation. Duna, on the other hand, doesn't have that. So in orbit around Duna, you'll still get radiation. Now, if you're just out in between planets, you're going to just get background cosmic radiation. But also around planets, you have radiation belts, which crossing through will expose you to extreme levels of radiation. So you need to do it quickly. And finally, with the radiation is the storm radiation, and this is to do with space weather. Every now and then the sun likes to kick up a coronal mass, mass injection, or ejection rather, and this will send a corona that will basically send a crap load of radiation through the entire system. Now you will get warned by the game before one of these events happens, because if you are in the direct path of this, your Kerbals are going to get a crap load of radiation. If they're hiding in the shadow of a planet, they're a bit better off. And this storm radiation will hit, and just, if you're inside of a magnetosphere or on the other side of a planet, you're safe. Otherwise, you're screwed. And when this happens, not only will your Kerbals get a crap load of radiation, but also your whole relay network will go black out. You will have no signals going while that coronal mass ejection is happening. That radiation storm is just screwing up all the signals so you cannot communicate. So that's something you have to worry about. Now, that is it for all of the fun new things you have to worry about, which you may now be thinking, how in the crap can you plan a mission taking all of this into account? Well, Thankfully, the mod gives us something for that, the planner. You'll notice we have this little uh, thing down here, this button. 
is our trip planner. And what this will tell you is how much you have of everything and how long it will last you, which is good. Now, right now you can see we have electric charge. It shows us that we have that much electric charge, how much the ship will consume, how much it generates, and the life expectancy. Same thing for food. We have the, cons the total, the consume, the cultivated, and the expectancy. The oxygen, we just have the storage, consumed, recycled, and the life expectancy for this one, quite a long time, six years and 144 days. And then we have the quality of life, which for these guys is modest. Their entertainment is good. Their other factors, they can call home through the radio, so that's always nice. So the time to instability, basically they can last five years before they start going stir crazy. Now next you wanna do is actually click up here at the top and that'll go to page two where you have radiation, reliability, signal, and environment. Now the radiation, it shows uh, if you're in the magnetosphere, how much you'll get a radiation belt, how much you'll get, how good or bad your shielding is for us poor, and then the life expectancy. So right here, it breaks it down into different things. So cosmic radiation, we can survive for 308 days and three hours. In a storm, we can last for three days. Going through a radiation belt, we can last three hours and 42 minutes before our Kerbals kick it. Reliability, well, we'll have 0.97 func malfunctions per year, not that bad. Redundancies, we do have two different antennas and two different batteries, so we have multiple redundancies there. So quality is good, and huh, it says engineer is no, but I actually have an engineer in here. I think it's only detecting the command pod. So uh, I have Jebediah in the command pod, so he is the pilot. I do have an engineer though in the in here, so that is actually not showing quite correctly. Now for signal, we have our total range. If we are a relay, which is yes, our transmission rate and our error correction, which again is that uh, those different numbers for the tech. And finally the environment, how much temperature we can survive, the temperature drift we can deal with, our inside atmosphere, which is no, because we're not in an atmosphere. Oh, uh, well, technically we are, but we aren't. And how long we can last in the shadows, which is important, because we can only last, with this ship, 10 minutes and 46 seconds in the shadows. So without, with all of our electrical charge, that's how long we can last before freezing. Which should, you know, hopefully be enough. Hopefully. <laughs> and the fun thing is here, these numbers of the expectancy can change. Now, you guys probably can't see this because of YouTube quality, but we have two other things here which I wish would really be changed here. We have a gray background with light gray text, and up here is Kerbin, and here is low orbit. So with the planner, you can change what planet you're wanting to go to. So for instance, if I want to go to Eve, you'll notice that I, a lot of these numbers are changing as I am changing the planet because we're having different situations. So our life expectancy and expectancy of stability, etc., is changing as we're going to these different places. And we also can choose between low orbit, orbit, high orbit, and then landed. And all of these things will tell you about what you're going to need to get there. Best case scenario, best case scenario. If something goes wrong, you're screwed, but it will tell you your estimates of the best case scenario to get to whatever planet or moon and to where you want to be there, which is always good. Now, if we leave here, don't save that, and actually go back out just to the space center, we have another fun feature. If we already have ships out there in the solar system, we have this button here, which shows us every ship we have out there and where they are. So test ship one is in orbit around Kerbin, test ship two is in orbit around Duna, test ship three around Eve, and test ship four is around Kerbin. And then we have this column here, which basically you don't want anything in this column here. This column is for problem icons. For instance, my guy around Duna is currently getting affected by 0 0.02 rads per hour. So he is exposed to cosmic radiation. Where this one around Kerbin, I parked it in the shadow of the planet. So it's in shadow and so the greenhouse is not growing. So it's telling us that we're not producing food. 
Now next we have how much electrical charge is left on the ship. So if it's running low, you'll see this highlighted in red. Or if it's, you know, about halfway through, it'll be uh, the yellowish orange. Same with right here. This is the food and oxygen. You can actually see that right now Test Ship 1 has 55% food and it will be depleted in 60 days. But it's oxygen, 100%, and it'll be depleted in one point, well, one year and 423 days. And it'll tell you how many days and how much for each of these. We then have the malfunctions, so it'll show you the quality of the ship and if there is any malfunction on board that you can then go and, hey, oh god, I need to go to Test Ship 3 and fix something. Ah, and Test Ship 4 is now in the sunlight, so you can see that that one went away. It is now back to growing food. Excellent. And then the last bit is the direct link, if they are linked back to the Kerbal Space Center. And all of these are, except for Test Ship 3, which I didn't put an antenna on. So, of course, you can see, no antenna, it's highlighted in red. Uh, they're screwed, basically. They have no way of communicating with home, so they're going to get mad after a while, and they can't send back science. And so this is good because you can monitor all of your different ships. And what's fun is that even if we say go to one of these ships, like, uh, uh, we'll go to this one, sure, what the heck. And we go to one of our ships, we can still bring up the monitor here and see how the other ships are doing. So while we're flying around, we can see, oh, oh crap, I need to go over to test ship one real quick because they're having a problem. Because that's one of the things about this mod, it has a background simulation running at all times. So no matter if you're flying the ship or not, all of these various things are going to change constantly. And that will determine the survivability of your crew. And so it's good to have this monitor on all the time so you can always see what's going on with your ships. Because otherwise, well, you might forget and they could die. But yeah, that is really all there is to talk about with Kerbalism. I mean, that was a lot of talking and holy crap, we've been going for a half an hour. So I think that's a good place to leave. <laughs> It's basically just a big summary of everything, uh, but hopefully it helps out some of you guys who have been wanting to try out Kerbalism but don't quite understand it. And if you'd like to try it for yourself, definitely, definitely do. It is great, if a little bit overwhelming. Uh, link is in the description, as always. And definitely go have fun with it. Go and try and kill your gerbils through radiation or something, I don't know. But enjoy yourself, and of course I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you do come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!